Well, God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Another day to come together and worship the Lord. So let's just uh, start with prayer and committing the time to Him. Heavenly Father, we do pray this morning that you will come with your Holy Presence and by your Holy Spirit to minister to us and through us and help us just to uh, understand and see more of you and to draw closer to you. I just pray that you will meet all the needs we have, all the questions we have, that you would answer them and just minister to us as we look to you and want to thank you for who you are in our lives and what you've done for us, for dying on the cross of Calvary and for being our Lord and Saviour. We just want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's sing praise him, praise him. Praise him.
closer walk with me let's see that one <laughs>
you know, years of spending vanity and pride. And you know, for me, I was 27 or 26 when I started to see the things of the Lord. But, um, but all those years before I regretted, I thought, what a waste of life, what a waste of time. Praise God. The Lord has given us a land of good and just little whips we're fighting giants you know there were giants in the land but we forget that sometimes it's giants and things sometimes go really bad oh now you're just fighting giants <laughs> amen and you're gonna have the victory over them amen do we have any testimonies this morning any testimonies anyone I know some have, but um, too shy to share. No, but any prayer requests? Yep. Let's just commit those to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for knowing all things. You know our hearts, our desires, our requests now before you. I just ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would meet the request that you will give uh, uh, understanding and clarity and answer the prayers I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's so simple, eh? Ask whatever you want. I will do it, Jesus said. Let's just believe for it. Let's sing another two, three songs. Come and dine, the master calleth. Jesus has a table free where the saints of God are free.
is coming, and we've never been that close to the coming of the Lord. Each time I stop and take the time to look at
living God. And that is so important to be aware of all the time. It's a living God. There's a lot of idol worship around us, but people worship even people, perishable things, but we worship a risen king. The tomb now is empty. Let's sing that. <clears throat> the tomb now is empty. The storm.
scripture as we stand. Psalm 84 verse 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. You may be seated. I call this little message, Feed Your Soul. Feed Your Soul. And that's what I'm going to talk about. But before we start, I just had a, uh, heard a message this morning or last night. And something stood out to me, and I thought I'd share that. The photo's been taken. Take a look at it and see where you're at. See if you identified with Jesus Christ. Just have a look at yourself. I would take a photo, and here's your photo, and you look at yourself. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> or a video would even be better. And look at yourself and say, am I in Christ this morning? But let's just move that way. So my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. See, we have to give attention to our soul. That's the most important thing in, in, in us is our soul. Because the soul uh, will live forever. <coughs> So we want to follow the deep cry of our heart. You know, sometimes we, we follow all sorts of things, but follow the deep cry <coughs> in, your heart, in your heart, for you are a living soul. So place your soul in God's ordained environment. That means fellowship with Him. Be around where the Lord is. Be around the things of God. You know, there's a God, God's ordained place for you. To be in Him at all time, and there is an enemy of you and God, and, and who, who who tries to prevent or distort God's will for you. That's true. There is an ordained place God wants you to be, and there's a place where you you live in victory, a place where you live glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's an enemy that tries to prevent you from being there. And you know, sometimes it comes in, in little things. Oh, I'm too shy. Oh, I'm too shy. Well, you know, there was a man in the Bible, Jesus talks about, he gave them one pound and two pounds and five pounds. And one made ten pounds and one made double the other one and one buried the pound. He was too scared. He, I might do something wrong. But he was a useless servant. There was... The little he had was taken off him and given to the one who had. He wasn't necessarily a bad servant, but he was attacked in the mind by the enemy. Oh, you're no good with money. You should, you should just bury it. And, you know, don't lose it. Yeah. Oh, you're not a good speaker. You never should say anything. You haven't got it in you. But you see, that's, that's the enemy. Who wants to stop you from being what Christ wants you to be? You see, the enemy attacks come towards all part of your being. And your being is body, spirit, and soul. That's, the, that's what you are. Body, we can see. Spirit, we sometimes experience. And the soul, you know, the Lord knows. Body spirit and soul the body is what can be seen or felt the spirit is the unseen and so is the soul the body is perishable but the soul is eternal and can only be destroyed by god himself that's what the bible says soul and spirit are very similar they go together in a sense it's a very similar thing but what I'd like to, uh, you to take notice of this morning is we are in a battle and we have to overcome. We have to overcome. And in Him we have overcome. If you rest in Him, we are overcomers. But like I said a bit earlier on, we're not fighting flesh and blood, but powers 
and wickedness in high places. We are fighting giants. Yeah. We're not fighting little dwarfs. We're fighting giants. Yeah. And, you know, those giants were in Canaan. They were giants. And we sometimes think, oh, it's just walk in and have the victory. No, it's a battle. And it's scary to look at the giant. Now, if you see a, a, a man that is about 12 foot tall or something like that, or somewhere even bigger, 15 foot, you know, I probably would reach just past their knees somewhere. <laughs> and the Lord says, you've got the victory. <laughs> now, it's, it's very scary to what? To the flesh, to your eyes, you know. That's what I'm saying. In a body, you know, we have these perceptions in the body. Now, in a body, we feed our body. You know, you feed your body. That's one thing. <coughs> Just remember, I'm talking about feeding your soul. We feed our body. Our body has, you can say, five, five uh, inlets or whatever you call them senses to contact the outside world which is see taste feel smell and hear so if you fight the enemy you can see them and they're intimidating sometimes sometimes you feel them sometimes you hear them roaring at you but don't just go by there you see that's just the natural that's just a natural. And too many people are just in the natural. You see, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. So keep it clean. Feed it with the right kind of food. Stay healthy. But remember, this is third priority. It's not first priority. Sometimes we get mixed up. And we just look after this body <coughs> and nothing else, and not the soul, and not, and, and not the spirit in that sense. And, but it's not priority. I've sh shared that before, uh, I knew from this person, lovely woman, her husband died, she was still reasonably young, not that old. And, uh, well, she wanted to look good and everything, so... Went to the gym every day, looking good, looking in a mirror, had the hair dyed a bit of blonde and a bit of brown so to look like real and, and all these things. Then suddenly she got ill up to death. Just before she died, she said, I've wasted so much time. Just giving so much attention to this body which dies anyway. You look in a mirror, you don't look the same as you looked five years ago or ten years ago you know it's funny we uh, have photos from the weddings and I looked at myself when my first daughter got married <laughs> nothing like when my last daughter got married <laughs> you know it's not that long ago you know we just get older we perish we slowly die this flesh does <laughs> so why should we give us so much attention but everything is geared towards that. The advertising, everything around is geared. So don't spoil the body or it will, it will start demanding things of you. Did you know that? The more you spoil your body, the more it wants. <laughs> That's true. The flesh wants. So let not the flesh rule over the spirit. That's what I'm saying. You know, you spoil your body, you, you give it things. You start to have McDonald's for breakfast, next thing you make it a habit, you need to have it every day. <laughs> Body asks for it. But you know, it's, it's not even good for you, that one. But uh, look after your body, but don't make it first priority. It's not first priority. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, walking after the flesh is no longer priority for a believer. It's not. 
But then we have Galatians 5.24. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. That's about dying to self. But what does the enemy say? What does the enemy say? Matthew 4, the enemy says, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. <laughs> That's what the enemy said to the Lord when he was hungry, after he fasted for 40 days. So the enemy comes and attacks that little flesh. And, you know, if you live by the flesh... Could have said, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. A fast of 40 days, Lord must be pleased. You know, fair enough, I can turn it into bread and have a decent meal. It's about time. You know, the body would say, tell you that. Or the devil. <laughs> so he tempted him with that. But what was the answer? So when the spirit overrules the flesh, it says, it is written, referring back to the word of God. Shh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How does that feed you? You know, I haven't eaten, I need some food. How does that feed you? I tell you what, God has food that sustains you. You know, once he fed a prophet and sustained him for, for, for weeks and weeks with a Heavenly food, you know, it sustains you. So the spirit has to overrule the flesh. And it did. Jesus showed it there. So when we go to the spirit, you know, we have to feed the spirit. There's also five inlets, you can say. We have imagination. Inwardly, we have imaginations. We don't see that, you know, but you can have imaginations. You can have a conscience. You can have a memory. You can have reason. And you can have affection. Now, if you don't feed the natural man, it will die. And if you don't feed the spiritual man, it will die. But you have to be careful how you feed your spiritual man. You know, those things in the flesh, like see, hear, smell, taste, all these things, at same in the spirit, imagination, conscience, memory, reason, and affection, that's where the devil can have a go at you. Yeah. Imagination. <clears throat> you sit there and you think, imagine, oh, nobody cares about me. You know, you can have imaginations. The next thing you have a whole drama in your mind and thinks nobody loves me, nobody comes to visit me, nobody cares. You can have an attack on those levels too. Or what about conscience? You can see your conscience. You can brush it aside and say, oh, it doesn't really matter. The devil attacks your memory, reminds you of things which happened years ago. He's done me wrong. Well, she's done, said that about me years ago. Yeah, I can f f forgive, but I can't forget. So you start to dwell on those things. And then you start to reason. Why didn't God do this? Why didn't he heal me when I cried out and I needed him and I really wanted him to heal me? And he didn't. You start to reason. Maybe he doesn't care. Ah. After all, he might not be such a good God, like people say. If he's love, why didn't he do it? You know, you start to reason. And then you have affections. You can be a, uh, have affections for, for, for things which may not be helpful. You see, there is an inward man, but you have to feed it with the things of God. You know, we have to feed it with the things of God. Same with a natural body, you feed it with the things God provides. He provided good food. But man has perverted it and hybrid and done all sorts of things with it. But we need to feed our spirit with the things of God. 
Spiritual food is the word in season, the word you need right now. It's spiritual food. I can read you chapter after chapter in the Bible and it doesn't actually necessarily feed you, but if something's spoken that addresses your situation or a situation in your life where you struggle with, that can feed you if you can receive it, if you can swallow it, if you can eat it, you know. So, I put down here, cut off all formalities, cut off all the ritualistic religion, and come into the realms of the living God, who awakens the human soul and brings you into righteousness, into worship of Him in spirit and in truth. I think that's from a quote. In spirit and in truth. That's where he wants us to be. In worship, in spirit, and in truth. But as I said, we have in the spirit all sorts of perceptions like imaginations, conscience, memory, all these things. Where the enemy can trouble you, can give you wrong thoughts, can give you wrong pictures, can show you a whole, the memory can tell you, show you how hard you've been done by, you know, how, how you've been wronged, how you've been hurt. And you know, it can actually stop you to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost when He wants to lead you somewhere. Oh, well, they, they, they hurt me, you know. I used to go to a church, they didn't treat me right. Didn't treat me right. I'm still hurt. Can't be bothered. All churches are hypocrites anyway. So, let's not go to church anymore. You know, you can get like that. But we can brush it away and say, Lord, yeah, I know these things happen. That's true. That's true. But Christ came and delivered me. Christ came and he died for me. Christ came and gave me new life. Christ came and gave me the Holy Spirit. And by the Holy Spirit, we're not led by that stuff. We live by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So let's phase out those things. But they come towards you. They will come towards you. You know, when you fight a giant, like what we said, the giant doesn't come naked. He comes with an armor. He comes with spears. He comes with swords. He comes with, with all sorts of equipment against you. It's not just one thing. Oh, I fight the no, he comes with all sorts, and you battle against all these things. How can my little stick break this armor? By the word of God. And <laughs> that's the way it does. Not naturally. If you use your natural senses, you don't even go to war. And you know, that applies for us today. Oh, I'm no good anyway. I'm always a failure. I couldn't be a preacher, or I couldn't be this. You know. That's how we have to, to be careful that we don't feed the wrong things to our spirit, but feed the things of God. So, the spirit of truth will always glorify Jesus Christ. That's how you can discern where it comes from. Does it bring glory to the Lord? Or doesn't it? So, let your body, soul, and spirit be fully dedicated to the Almighty. Amen. Use your natural senses, your spiritual senses, as unto God. Test the spirits which come towards you, your spiritual senses of imagination, conscience, memory, reason, and affection. Be led by the Spirit of God. See, that's where the battle is sometimes. Oh, we, we don't realize this flesh says yes until it starts to hurt. And then you say no. So, you want to come, let's go for a swim. Oh, yes, that'll be fun. Then the water's cold. Oh, no, I don't want to go swimming today. You know, the flesh responds very quickly. Now, the question is, was it the spirit leading you to go for a swim? Or was it, was it just that, what was it? And if the spirit says go and have a swim, then you go where the water is cold or warm, it doesn't really matter. Then you have to overcome the flesh to be following the spirit. I'm not promoting going swimming, I'm just saying that for an example. 
<laughs> See, what did the enemy say to Jesus? If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, jump off the cliff. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And you know, the devil can give you the word of God from the scriptures to mislead you. You cannot just say one word and that is all. You know, some people come and corner you and they either say, doesn't the Bible say this? Doesn't it say this? But it says also other things. You know, one man, I, I know that he once uh, said, oh, you're all wrong. You know, the Bible says, all I've seen that come short of the glory of God. How can you say, you know, you, 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 without sin, you're sinless. How can you say that? But the very next verse says, and he freely justifies the, the belief, you know, in Romans 3, 24 somewhere, you know, you read the next verse and it just undoes all these things. But you know, if, if you want to... I, I heard the man preach uh, a few months ago and he was preaching on uh, uh, on divorce. I think he was preaching on divorce. And it said somehow, look not for a way out kind of thing. Don't look for it. Can't recall the scripture now. But he highlighted the fact, don't even look for it. Don't even look for it. If you want to look for something you want desperately, you will find a scripture to justify what you want. But you have to be discerning first, is that the spirit of God? Is that the flesh that suffers? Or is it the spirit of God that directs me? You know, it's so simple. You know, sometimes we have desires in our hearts. I would like this. I would like that. And it doesn't come to pass. So you force the issue. Years ago, I remember uh, we had uh, this uh, backslidden sister come back to church. But she desperately wanted to get married. I was out. I wasn't interested. Then she had to go up my friend. He wasn't interested. She tried quite a few. She was hanging in there for three months. Three months. And she was still not married. So she left again and went in the world and just married somebody. But you see, are you driven by the Spirit of God or by the flesh? I remember I was in a meeting once and there was a girl in there. She desperately wanted to get married. <coughs> But there was nothing on the horizon, <laughs> you know. And sometimes you think, oh, well, how could it happen? No young man in church will know this. But, you know, I, I was sharing something about what a wife should be, according to Scripture. A helpmate, submissive to the husband, you know. I was just addressing that issue. And then... I've heard a lot of people when I was younger, especially women, uh, girls, oh, can't be bothered getting married. I want to travel. I don't want to get married. That's not true. <laughs> they wanted to get married, but that's what they said. And then, oh, if I get married, he can do this and he can, oh, I wouldn't do that. And, you know, they were not even in a place or fit to get married according to the Word of God. So you have to have the understanding, if you want a man of God, you need to be a woman of God. And if you want a woman of God, you need to be a man of God. So a man of God is not attracted by a woman of the world. Maybe physically or on the outside, but if you get to know a person, you're not attracted at all. There's nothing attractive with, a, with worldly people. But then... You want to be like the scripture. So you do attract scripture. You want to be a husband according to scripture. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Man, that's a lot. <laughs> until death will part you. Not until she gets old or grey or, 
or overweight or whatever until death will part. Until the Lord comes, you see. But are we led by the flesh or by the spirit according to the word of God? What is our imagination? What is our, our, our reasoning in our minds? What are our affections? Are they according to the will of God? So we need to con consider these things. So Jesus gave the word, for it is written, he, uh, no, not Jesus, the devil tempted Jesus, for if thou be the Son of God, you jump off the cliff. Angels will come and hold you, carry you. That's the word. Give the word test. He would have failed. But the Holy Spirit overrules that spirit, or even the human spirit. And what did he say? It is written, again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see, there's things sometimes people do, they tempt, they tempt the Lord. It's actually tempting. I just read... Uh, um, doesn't mean we can't do anything, but I just read in the paper the other day, a New Zealander just died, jumped to his death. This, uh, uh, what do you call it? Jumping off the cliffs with a wingsuit. I sometimes feel that is kind of tempting God. <coughs> it is playing with your life. Lots of things can go wrong. Why would you want to do it? <coughs> to get a thrill in, in the flesh, that's all. So we have to be careful. So it is written again, so he quoted another scripture, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And if somebody brings a scripture at you or tries to corner you with the scripture, just say, it is written again. What else does it say? I have been in a church many years ago where it was... <laughs> It was almost a pet scripture. Obey the elders. The word says obey the elders. No, you shouldn't, you know. And they had all sorts of things. Shouldn't have a beard, for instance. Or you sh should have your hair done differently. <coughs> You're like an infidel. You have all hair hanging down. That's, that's all right. You should this. obey the elders. And that was a pet doctrine, a pet thing. It was scripture. But it is also written, you know, you can say it's written again. You know, you live unto the Lord. All things you do, do it unto Christ. Don't do it unto the elder, do it unto Christ. You know, and sometimes you can say, oh, in order not to offend them, okay, I'll do this. But you see, people take it the wrong way sometimes. You can misinterpret the word misinterpret the word. I remember that story um, uh, Brother Brandon was telling it. There was this girl, she just got the Holy Ghost and she was playing the piano and she was wearing a, I think a bit of loose blouse or something or slightly revealing or see-through or something. Anyway, one brother complained and he should not be there and he should be told, and, and Brother Bram says to him, just leave her alone. The Holy Spirit will show her these things in time. It's not for us to force people into whatever shape we want them to be. The Holy Spirit has to work on them. Otherwise, you become a hardened Christian. Oh, well, I have to do that, so should she, or so should he. You know? We don't want to be legalistic, but you see, the Holy Spirit will direct and lead you. And many times, people want to force the issue because there's a lack of faith in the Holy Spirit. Remember when Bron and I were young, younger, <laughs> we used to have a lot of visitors, a lot of visitors. Sometimes total strangers are picked up in town and brought them home for dinner and things like that. And I remember one night she was telling me after, I was witnessing, and then Bronwyn had the perfect thing to say, but she thought it's not appropriate for me to interrupt 
and to say these things because I was talking. I thought that was a really wonderful attitude. So she quietly prayed, Lord, show him these things, make him say it. And as soon as she finished praying, I said exactly what she wanted to say. Isn't that wonderful? That's how the Holy Spirit works. But you can force your way in, and then you may lose the saltiness of being a humble, submissive woman, <laughs> you know? But anyway, let's see always what the word says. Now we come to the soul. We want to feed our soul. That's, that's what is the most important thing. Feed your soul. So in your soul, you haven't got feelings and emotions that's in the spirit. In the soul, you have faith or unbelief. You either believe it or you don't. You say, yet yeah, this is true or this is a lie. In the soul, you only have those two things. I'm either for Christ or against Christ. I don't believe him or I believe him. As I said at the beginning, take a photograph and look, am I in the faith or where I'm at? It's, it's a very important thing. In your soul is either unbelief or faith. A person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and preaches the gospel can feed your soul. It's the word of God, the anointed word of God feeds your soul. Whomsoever God ordains and sends, not self-appointed ones, can be instrumental to feed your soul. Whosoever. You know, sometimes we think, oh, we can only get it from here. Or we only can get it from there. No. Have you ever been spoken to by someone, stranger, about the Lord? And you felt, hey, that's something real. Whomsoever God sends, if he can receive it, it'll feed your soul. And that's what we want to feed on. The word of God and what the Lord sends our way. What does the enemy say? What did the enemy say to the Lord when it came to that? He said, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and everything. If you serve me, I'll give you more money. So you can buy more things. <laughs> you can drive the flashes car. If you serve me, I'll give you friends out there who admire you. I'll give you dozens of girls who want to have a ride in your car. You know, that's the devil. He says to you things. He says to you things. All these things I'll give you if you worship me. And you cannot say you don't worship the devil if you, if you do these things. You see, a lot of people say, no, I don't worship the devil. I believe in God. But the very way they live, it shows they worship the devil. I read in a book once where the writer said the devil was very cunning he took these church people, chopped off their heads, turned it around, put it back on. So while they looked to heaven, they all walked towards hell. Well, I don't want to be in a place like that. I don't want to just look, oh, I believe in the Lord. I believe in the Lord, but I'm walking the ways of the world. I don't want to do that. We should be honest with oneself and know that the devil says, all these things I give you, you worship me. I'll give you a brand new car, sports car. But you have to go and borrow some money and become indebted, become a slave to the system, you become this. You know, there's a lot of things go with these things. And who, what desires these things? It's not the soul desires these things. If you have faith in God, you don't desire it. The flesh desires these things. The flesh does. But we have to overcome these things. It doesn't mean we can't have any good thing, but the flesh should be third priority, not first priority. So the faith in the soul, what did it say? Get thee behind me, Satan. 
For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I love this one. Sometimes you need to come to say, Get behind me, Satan, with all that nonsense, with all these things, with all the worries. Get behind me. I serve the living God. Yeah. Amen. But how can you feed your soul? Like I said, accept what God sends your way. I've got a quote here I like to read. I thought it was quite interesting. No, I uh, don't want to make a connection with me, but it's, it talks about a pastor. So forget about me, just listen to this. And now, if you'd sent for your pastor, and he didn't come, and pray for you when you were sick. Well, you say, you old hypocrite. I will go over to the, join the John's church or somebody. That's the reason your pastor can't do nothing for you. That's the reason he can't do nothing for you. You've got to have faith in him and confidence in him as a man of God and know that all Things work together for good to them that love God. That's right. You see, yeah. I mean, you don't want to put your confidence in man. It's not meant that, like that. But you have to think, well, is he led by the, the Spirit of God? Or is he led by... Why, why did he forget the appointment? Why did he forget this? Or why didn't he do that? Why didn't he ring me? Or why didn't he turn up? Maybe he forgot me. His flesh. But the Lord may have allowed it. You see, we have to have that attitude. All things work together for good. To them that love God. <coughs> we cannot receive anything. Because if you take offense, next time uh, the person speaks to you, well, who is he? You know, then the memory comes in. I remember he didn't turn up when I needed him. You know, <laughs> he didn't care. He visits those people, but he hasn't visited me. You know, we have to walk before God. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen. You know, some people don't visit you not because they don't love you or, or, or they don't want your company. I mean, there are people that don't visit you because they don't care for you. But, uh, but we walk before God. So, we cannot receive anything if we have the wrong attitude. We need to have a, an open attitude, knowing that all things work together for good to them that love God. Then he says, but I know this, you've got to have confidence in a man you're dealing with, or it won't do you any good uh, to do any dealing. That's true. You've got to be, believe your pastor. He, he's a, a good God-saved man preaching the gospel. Stand behind him with everything you've got. If he isn't, go somewhere where they do it. That's right. Now, that clears it up for both sides. Now, remember this. If he preaches the gospel, stay with him, help him, because he's a man sent from God, ordained of God, to feed your soul. Well, tell you what, you know how you can feed your soul too? Any brother or sister, if you fellowship together and you talk about the Lord, not only says the Bible, there is a book of remembrance written for those who talk often about the Lord, but he suddenly comes on the scene and he ministers to you. Whoa, I never saw that. And he feeds your soul. I just shared with my, my son-in-law yesterday, I was with Brother Joseph once, um, those who know him. We were driving over to Kaimais and, and talking about the Lord. And then something I, I was saying, and a presence came down, and he blessed me so much. I mean, I, didn't, I just realized what it meant, what I said. And it hit him, it hit me. And we were rejoicing, our souls were fed. When we got home, we sat in the car for a, a, 
maybe more than an hour, talking about the Lord. Wouldn't want to go out the car and start a prank together and other things came out. But you see, it feeds your soul. So fellowship with one another. Talk about the Lord, the things of God with one another. That's the only ones that can actually feed your soul. If the Lord brings an anointing on a word or on something that's said, that will feed your soul. <coughs> So in the moment you only see humanity and faults in a person, that person won't be able to help you at all. Attitudes like, what would he know? What would she know? <laughs> Have you ever come across that? What would you know? What would she know? She wouldn't know anything. You see, attitudes like that, the Lord himself could come in human flesh to you and talk to you, oh, who is he? What good can, can come out of Nazareth, they said. What good can, can come out of Nazareth? Who is this fella? He's not in part of our church. They miss Jesus, the Pharisees. They miss him completely because of the attitude not being open. You see, they had their church. They had their rituals. They had their pastors and their priests and their wives and they were happy with it so anything different whoa who is this fella what good could come from nazareth anyway that's what they said and then they tried to find fault they couldn't even receive the simple things the lord had for them they couldn't receive it because of their attitude or blinded eyes so to speak another time remember this person he was born blind and the Lord healed him and then the parents were scared to be put out of church because if they confess Jesus Christ so they said you ask him you ask him so the Pharisee said who opened your eyes he said oh I don't know but he must have been of God who else can open the eyes of the blind you know and they said, who are you trying to teach us? And, and you know, and, and then um, they cast him out. And then Jesus came to him and said, it's me, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, it's so wonderful, that story. You should sp spend time on it. But you see, they could not receive, not even a miracle that happened, because it didn't happen in their church. It happened through somebody else. But I'll tell you one thing. If you died of cancer... <laughs> You don't care whether I pray for you or a, a minister from America or just a, a street preacher or a Baptist preacher or any preacher. You don't care. Or a sister comes and, and, and lays hands on you and says, it says, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Believe it. And something strikes home. If you can't receive it, you don't care how it comes <coughs> if you get healed. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. It doesn't have to come through this person or through that person or through this church or the other church. It has to come through Christ. And sometimes we can have attitudes. Like I said, what would they know? They don't even believe this. And they don't know that. You, you know, uh, Brother Branham had a wonderful ministry of healing and, and uh, revealing the secrets of the hearts and and on all sorts of things. And he called so many people brothers who did not even believe this and the other. And he said, oh, brother, I, I can't remember, Bosworth or somebody, he said, he doesn't even believe in the millennium. <laughs> so what? He believes Christ died for his sins. And that's what he consecrated on. So if he would think, oh, he doesn't even believe that, who is he? He could never actually receive anything from a person like that. You couldn't. If you have these ideas. I know it all. I know it all. And you know so little when you think you know it all. That's what happens. So. Attitudes like. What would he know? What would she know? Does not help. That does not help to receive. From the Lord. To feed his soul. Or they don't see it my way. That's a good one eh? Many have that problem. We don't see it alike. 
But who love the Lord and love the Lord and we try everything in us to serve the Lord, we don't see this alike and we don't put enough <laughs> emphasis on this or that. So what? But we can love one another in the Lord and have fellowship under the shared blood of Christ. Or oh, he's not from our church. That's a good one. I only listen to the message preachers. No, nobody else. Well, I tell you what, I listened to Billy Graham the other day. I was greatly blessed. <laughs> because I didn't have a preconceived idea of, oh, what would he know? <laughs> I was blessed. He talked about the power of the blood. I was blessed. Praising God. Doesn't mean I'm a follower of Billy Graham now. You, you know what I mean? But, you see, I'm not saying listen to any, any old person or this, but if the Lord speaks through somebody, receive it. Receive it, it'll feed your soul. In order to be able to receive anything, you have to be prepared to receive it as from the Lord. Then discern whether it comes from God or not. You still have to have discernment. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that they say things out of themselves or out of their teachings or out, and it can be totally wrong. But we've got discernment. We don't have to receive everything. It's like, I like to make that example. You know, sometimes people get dreams, spiritual dreams. One of my boys had a spiritual dream the other day. Then you, Joshua? Yeah. He was very touched. He was speaking to the Lord. And the Lord had so much understanding. He said, the Lord didn't get sick of me talking so much. And then the Lord said, I'll come back for you. What a dream. Amen. How wonderful. Yeah. But you know, I've had spiritual dreams, but amongst nightmares. And then suddenly there was a section was spiritual, edifying, and I believe it was of God. But amongst the door was all sorts of nightmares, before and after, but that part was of the Lord. So let's have discernment. Not every silly thing we dream is of God. And not every dream has to be purely this. There may be other things with it. But you know what is of God and what is not. See, that, I find that's quite important to, to discern what comes from God. You can't just throw everything out like some people do. They throw everything out. But we have to know what is from God and if it comes from God. And don't be a respecter of persons. God isn't a respecter of persons, so we don't need that. God's word will bring fruit and manifestation. That's what it will bring. Now you think, well, what is fruit and manifestation? What is it? Tell you what, sometimes you don't have to go that far. I mean, I look at the sisters here. They all wear skirts, long skirts, and have long hair. That's a manifestation of the Word of God. Because you've taken the hold of it, and it became part of you, and you're manifesting it. That's true. That's a manifestation of the Word of God. That's why you get a lot of attacks in these areas, you know. You get a lot of attacks in these areas. But it's a manifestation of Scripture. If a man loves his wife, it's a manifestation of Scripture. If children obey their parents, it's a manifestation of Scripture. So, the soul has faith or unbelief, and that's where we actually live. The Spirit can come on the outside and anoint you to do certain things, and you do it, but that doesn't mean you even say it. doesn't mean that. You see, you can get, come under an anointing. Re, you read in the Old Testament where Saul went somewhere, and everybody who, who got near that prophet started to prophesy and and worship God and, and, and prophesy and they say, oh, it's all one, now one of the prophets because they come under their anointing. Doesn't mean 
you've got the Holy Ghost if you come under that anointing. It's just an outward outpouring onto you, but, but it, if it comes inside, you know, if it comes inside, that's what it is. You know, Caiaphas prophesied, Judas cast out devils, he was sent out with, with the others. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The weeds can rejoice with the wheat. But it's what? It's at the core. You know, that's, that's really the soul. It's not the, the anointing. It's the soul inside. Do you believe the word of God or you disbelieve it? It's simple as that. And you know, if you say, yes, I believe, it works against a lot of things of the flesh. It does. It works against a lot of things in your imaginations and memories and, and affections and things. It works against a lot of these things. Faith should prevail over all these things. Amen. Now, just as we come to an end here, you see, Christians can act like they're Christians. And act and be ever so good at it, but that doesn't mean they're saved. You know, that's true. Some act. I've seen people, I actually felt like a heathen. They appeared so humble. Oh, brother, you know, halfway down the knees and, and all these things. The next thing you see them doing all sorts of things. A big act. It stinks up to heaven. It does. It's just a big act. You don't have to act like that. You either are like that or you're not. And if you have faith in God and you stumble, make a mistake, say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that, sorry, Lord, you know, and you keep on going. But don't act. Don't put an act on like you're, you're such a holy, humble person if you're not. Just be yourself. Look at the picture. That's, I don't want to be that. Lord, change me. Lord, come and give me this new heart. See... It's the inside soul that never dies. It's got eternal life. You either have eternal uh, con uh, condemnation or eternal life. Acts 3, 22 to 23. I would like to read you that. <coughs> For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto him, unto me, sorry, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear their prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And that's referring to Jesus Christ. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And we know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the risen Lord and Savior. And He still can speak to you today. And whatsoever He shall say unto you, that's what you should be doing. You know, hear what the Holy Spirit said. That's, that's really what we need to have ears to hear what the Spirit says. Amen. Notice Jesus said, only believe... For all things are possible to them that believe. Faith and works are husband and wife. They work together. The husband works with the wife, the wife with the husband. They identify one another. My works show my faith. Faith that doesn't produce works, anyone has a right to doubt your testimony. That's true. So our lives have, have to actually produce something. You say you believe that and, and you worry every day of, the, of your life. All your cares cast up on him. He takes care of it. And then you worry. You worry. You, you don't have to worry. God will make a way. i tell you that much. He will make a way. It may not be the way we, we, we want to see it or we, we think it will be, but he'll make a way. God will make a way. Notice, 
faith doesn't if faith doesn't produce works, anyone has a right to doubt your testimony. So what I'm saying this morning: feed your soul. Stay around where soul food is dished out. <laughs> Give preeminence to feeding your soul. Have an ear what the Spirit says. Amen. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this meditation. Lord, as we do have faith in you, and we have an enemy that tries to attack us, that cannot kill that faith in our soul you place there. We have faith in you, but the attacks come in our spirit, in our flesh, but we are overcomers in Christ Jesus. And we want to thank you this morning for the faith you placed in our hearts. Lord, some of us have been walking with you for all these years, waiting for the coming of the Lord, and we're still waiting, and things are going one way or another and not the way they were planned in our lives, but we still have faith. We still believe in the living God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to thank you this morning, and I pray that even during the week that things coming our way that we have discernment and ears to hear when you want to speak to us. Lord, feed our souls, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> Let's just um, sing that, that song. What did I say? The song? Um, now let's sing, fill my cup, Lord. That's the one. <coughs> Like the water and the well I was seen For things that could not satisfy And then I heard my Savior speaking Go from my well that never shall
And you can feed the flesh, you can feed the spirit, in, in a sense. But feeding the soul is something different. I mean, I've been hearing preaching where they feed the flesh indirectly. Yes, brothers, the Lord understands, you know. You know, even King David committed adultery, you know. The Lord knows the weakness of our flesh, you know. And, you know, sympathizing with sin and the flesh. You can address the flesh and, and you go, out, oh, good, you know, I don't feel too bad now when I watch the wrong things on TV or whatever. You know, that's nonsense. That's trying to feed the carnality of people. And then in the spirit, you know, oh, it's just a spitting tongue. And the other one does this and jump around. And then they go out and still live like anybody else in the world. You know, that's, you have entire ministry doing that. And then you hear about the prosperity gospel, you know. That really addresses the flesh. Prosperity gospel. Brother, claim it, claim it. I've, I've visited an old man. He was lying in, in his mess for for months and months, and on a wall, he had all these posters, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, <coughs> half-naked women, I'm claiming it, brother, I'm claiming it, you know. I thought, man, you know, he heard this prosperity gospel. So he put all his wishes on a wall, and some of them were actually not really godly wishes. Why would you want to have a Lamborghini anyway? What's the point? You know, so everybody looks at you. Everybody looks at you and thinks you are something. It's about the same. These, these fellows, when they get a bit older, big gold chain, and gold watches, and, you know, you know if, you, if you lose your looks, you have to increase your wallet. And you're still popular, you know. But, you know, we want to feed the soul. I just don't accept stuff that doesn't feed your soul. If you feed the flesh, the flesh takes dominance in your life. It will. Yeah. It will take dominance. Yeah. If you feed just under those spiritual anointings and things, it will take dominance. And you forget about dying to self. You forget about yeah. believing the word and making it a part of you. So I encourage you, feed your soul, feed your soul. Let's finish with this one. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.